What's up, YouTube? I'm back with another video. It's Zilla, and who uh, we have? Who? Mama Zilla. Yeah, Mama Zilla. So, uh, I at first I wasn't gonna do the video with her. I was gonna do it by me, like one deep, and uh, with the Q and A. And those of you that don't know what a Q and A is, it's a question and answer. So basically, it's real questions from real people. These not no made up questions. And uh, in my head, I'm like, damn, why not have my mama in it too? You know, because some some questions she can't answer it too. So I also do want to hear some of her answers to some of these questions. And I, I would like to apologize if I if I did not get to your question. There were so many questions in my DM. And uh, yeah, and I might do a part two to this, to this video. So let's go ahead and jump right into the video, man. Uh, what's my favorite food? Your food would be chicken salad. Mm -hmm. And I just had that what? Last yeah. night. And it was good. Right. It's something about the chicken salad. Uh, just something about it that I really enjoy eating. And not only that, I'm really plain, y'all. Really just chicken and rice. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. what's your favorite food? Uh, my chicken salad. Chicken salad? I was made. Why? Though, like? Because uh, you get your vegetables in, you know? You get you get all the good, your cheese for your dairy, especially the meat. You know your chicken breast. So yeah, I'm very simple too. Oh, you know, that's it. Chicken salad and my soy sauce chicken, my garlic soy sauce chicken. I barely make it, but that's what I my favorite. Garlic what? Remember my garlic soy sauce chicken? How long ago you made that? I haven't made it in a while, but that's one of my favorites. So I ain't even tried it yet. My garlic, the chicken I used to bake, and yeah, but I don't know the difference between all the chicken oh, okay. and all that. Well, well, I, I will make it one day, and my spinach dip. You remember? Oh yeah, spinach, spinach dip. Oh, and my, the lettuce wrap. The lettuce my, wrap. Oh yeah. She got a bad lettuce wrap. So look, those for you to know, Mama Zilla's cooking. Like y'all know, it's official. Like it's it's better than. I don't think I can think of anybody that can really just fuck with your cooking like that. Excuse yeah. my language. But anyway, we're gonna go to the next question. Uh, what is your favorite color? I don't have just one favorite color. I really like more than one. So I'm just gonna give y'all probably just four. Uh, I like blue, black, white, orange, gray, forest green, and red. That's a lot of colors. I do. I like. I like colors. Yeah. I like sky blue. I like um, uh, red, and I like maroon, like burgundy, purple. Oh, I like burgundy too. Purple, and um, that money green. Somebody asked, "What is your motivation in life?" You want to go first? Yeah. Or we can just. This is my motivation first. in life, and my grandbabies. I have two grandbabies. That's that's it. This this three. You for real? This is my baby. Yeah. He's still gonna be my For real? Baby. Yeah. You ain't just saying that just for the video. No. Man, for real? Fuck no. Alright. Oh, all right. sorry. Alright, alright. No. Um. Uh. <laughs> We're shooting a video. Okay. Say goodbye. To Fa Soy Fu. To Fa Soy Fu. Yeah. Fa. So what's my motivation in life is really uh, my family, mm -hmm. uh, my daughter, my niece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really just my family, y'all. Yeah. Like I rather, I rather, I'm more happier when they're happy. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as, as long as I can provide for them and see her happy, and I that that's I'll be good with that. And of course, my other three sons. So all my kids and my grandbabies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, family, very important. So like I said, right now, it's only the beginning, y'all. Uh, not every day is perfect for us, but we just try to, you know, just stay consistent as far as with our goals and dreams. Cause we understand that every day is not perfect. You know, families, we're gonna struggle as a team but it's how we come back from it. It's how it's, it's about how we shake back from all this bullshit we went through, and uh, we still going through bullshit. But we don't want to uh, just what is it called? Focus on the negative stuff. 
<clears throat> but right now we're just taking it one day at a time, keeping it pushing, working out, you know, doing all the good stuff. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead. What's, what's the next one, man? Some people, somebody said, what are some of your goals set for this year? You can go. Yeah, I, I need to lose like 90 pounds, you know? I really need to do that. And, and, and my goal is to pay off my car. And my well-being, you know? Just be healthy every day. Just three? Yeah. Oh. And I guess one of my goals would be also losing weight. I do got to cut down. I'm at 249 right now. I did lose six pounds. I'm trying to get to like 230. Nah. Why are you trying to whisper? They can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, 220, that's too light. But probably like 230, 225, between that range. You know, I'm trying to cut everything up right now. Um, you can't cut when you're eating like a big old bag of chips. Well, who's cooking it? Who's bringing night? it? The chip. He eats like a bag of oh, chips. Oh, I love chips. But uh, y'all love chips. If y'all was able to give me some, make sure it's Doritos, red or blue. <laughs> Yeah, uh, for real. That's all I eat, dude. Doritos. But um, yeah. Another goal would be hopefully I can get off parole faster. I have been talking to uh, you know, some of, some of my team members. Uh, hopefully I can get off this the end of this year. Hopefully, so we're gonna see how that goes. Uh, you know, I'm always I'm still gonna stay out of trouble, do what I gotta do. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm also setting an example for those that's on probation or parole. So make sure y'all get them classes done. I already know how it is. Well, I just graduated from all my classes next month. You remember that shit, right? Mm -hmm. That shit was lame as hell. And those of y'all don't know, when I first came home, Zilla was on anchor mode. And let me tell y'all the schedule about that. So what? I think it was like Monday through Friday. It was 8 in the morning to what, 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. in the afternoon? Mm -hmm. Y'all know that's not so much time to even do a lot of stuff. Right, right. Mm -hmm. When really that was just so I can go look for a job. Right. But I didn't. I ain't gonna lie. I just enjoyed my first three, four months out with my family. Uh, and Saturday, Sunday, I was on lockdown. I couldn't even go nowhere. Nowhere. And then every Tuesday at 10 p.m. over there on what? What was it at? What was the pro thing at? 59? Yeah, you mean 10 a.m.? Oh yeah, 10 a.m. I'm tripping. Mm -hmm. The uh, yeah, 59, and 59 and what? Uh, like Tidwell. Yeah, so I had to go report over there every Tuesday at 10 o'clock a.m. to take a drug test and to do a, a checkup. And the checkup is basically I'm just uh, running it with my PO. You know, we talking. She asking me how I'm doing or what's on my mind mm -hmm. or did, you uh, find a job did I find a job? Oh, and then I had to take right parole fees, and I still got to pay parole fees. I still got to. And I'm glad I brought that up because I do got to pay it this week. If not next week, for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. So, P.O., if you watching this, I got it. I got you. I got you. Just chill and be still. Your team and, and your um, just No, I'm going to do that regardless. That ain't yeah. no goal. Yeah. There's another goal I had. Uh, oh, and hopefully I can debut at ROW the end of this year. You know, I don't want to rush nothing. What? The end of this year. That's a long ass time. You're gonna, yeah. you're gonna be before this year is over. The way you think of it, still, yeah, I, because uh, you're getting back that feeling of, you know, getting back to getting your mojo back. You know that. What mm, mojo mm, mean? Mm, like your energy back. That's like, what. That's what mojo mean. Energy. Yeah, like your mojo. Yeah, you go get that mojo back. Like that's what. I I'm never that. Yeah, well, write it down. I'm finna write that down. I don't <laughs> talk like that. Get your mojo bar. Mojo. Hopefully I can debut sometime this year at ROW. Uh, ROW is a, those of you don't know, ROW is a wrestling school. Do you feel like, do you feel pressure carrying on the Unwise wrestling career? Yes and no. The reason why I say yes is because you have people in my family that put years and years and years of blood, sweat, and tears into the business. And I feel like everybody would expect me to live up to that expectation, which is understandable, you know? And obviously, you know, my dad, my cousins right now, 
and everything that's going on. But then I say no because I know who I am and I know what I stand on and I know what I want out of life. So we're gonna put it like that. Yeah, and I wasn't even thinking like, even before I even started doing all this wrestling stuff, like I didn't even feel like there was a, what I can say, a void. You know what that means? That you, yeah, void. That I'm like trying that to you have to fill feel in. That. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't even feel like that. Even though I am, you know, my dad, Umaga and all that, but I still don't feel like that. Like I said, I just know who I am and what I've been through and all that. So, mm -hmm. next question. Which one of your dad's matches is your all-time favorite? I say him with John Cena at the last man standing. My dad didn't win, John Cena won, but overall it was a good match. Both of them did their best thing in that match. Like, even, yeah, that was good. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The last man standing yeah. where he was choking, was, choking was, him out. But yeah, yeah, man, that, that, that was one of my favorite matches match. that my dad had. And not only that, I want to say all the matches that he had with Jeff Hardy from 06, I was just, that's mine. From Jeff 06 Hardy. to 09. Any match that he had with Jeff Hardy, Best, my favorite. I was rocking with it. That was yours. My favorite was Jeff Hardy. Oh, them the only ones you know. That's the one I like. Oh, okay. Well, John Cena is one of my favorite too. Yeah, yeah. But um, Last Man Standing. And Bobby Lashley, you know the one where they oh, the shaved his head, Vince McMahon's head. Yeah, with Donald hair. Trump. Yeah, yeah, that was. To be honest, all the matches with my dad, I feel like he, the, you know, he one of the top goats in the business anyway. The next question, somebody said, "What is your most embarrassing?" Moment. So my most embarrassing moment was actually being locked up. And I'm gonna tell y'all just a little story on how embarrassed I was because, you know, in prison, we get in a fight over any little thing, any little thing. But I don't know, at that time I felt like I was right, but now I'm thinking like I was triggering. So I was just sitting, taking the sheet, right? And in prison, or the prison I was at, the where you gotta take a shit is gonna be in front of everybody. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be next to the day room. It's gonna be next to whoever sleeps right there, next to the toilet, whatever, right? But uh, on this specific day, I was taking a shit and they had this one cat. He kept on walking like in front of me while I'm taking a shit. But we catching eye contact. So I'm like, bro, what is you on, bro? Like. You good? You know what I'm saying? Having my y'all, I'm taking the shit. So I told bro, I'm like, hey, like I tapped him. Like while I'm on the shitter. You know what I'm saying? I tapped him. I'm like, hey, bro, you good, bro? And then bro, like, bro, what is you talking about? I'm, I'm chilling. I'm just doing my laundry. I said, bro, you ain't doing no laundry, bro. I ain't see you with no bucket or no bleach or uh, no clothes in your hand, bro. But yeah, he was like, man, whatever you trying to do, we can go ahead and get to it. Basically, he's just trying to punch off her. I'm like, bet, say later. So boom, you know, uh, I did what I had to do on the shit up, and I got up, and by the time I went, bro was like, bro, you really gonna fight me, bro, while you was on the shit up? I'm like, yeah, bro, cause you kept on looking at me. And then uh, one of the one of the OGs pulled up on me, he was like, Zilla, what, what, what's the issue? And I, I told him, and then the OG was laughing, like he was laughing hard as hell. And he was like, uh, nah, bro, bro don't be looking at you. That nigga eye, he got a fake eye. <laughs> he said, nah, bro. He said, Zilla, he got a fake eye. So, so nah, he wasn't looking at you, bro. So OG was laughing. He was like, Zilla, bro, you need to chill. Because I ain't gonna lie, I was ready to punch. Like, that shit was crazy. That's my first time getting a, getting into an altercation that's like that. Like, I'm on shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was, my, that was like one of my most embarrassing moments because. I did, because I ain't gonna lie, when that shit popped off, I, I was talking out my ass, and I was like, anybody could get it. You know, when you mad, you get the, you get to just talking, you get to moving, you feel me? But I was just like, I was I was like that in front of everybody. And uh, yeah, I had I had to go, I had to go back and apologize to the whole day room, everybody that was in my dorm. So I, I, I had, uh, you know, apologize and shit, you know what I'm saying, I own up to it. But anyway, <laughs> that's crazy, huh? That's funny. The next question, somebody said, was it difficult readjusting to the world when you got out? Uh, yes, it was. And I'm going to put it like this. Being in prison is way different rules and regulations you got to go by. 
And, you know, obviously in prison, that's a whole nother world inside of another world. So coming out here and going by these new rules and regulations that society's trying to throw at me was kind of hard. And not only that, my mindset, when I came home, I still had the penitentiary mindset on everybody trying to get down on me or everybody try to run game on me when really it's not like that. You know, because in prison, that's how it is. Somebody trying to get down on you every day. So you got to be on your P's and Q's every day. So that's how my mindset was when I came home. I'm thinking everybody trying to, you know, go against my vision or, you know what I'm saying? Just on some whole penitentiary thing. So I had to like, you know, change it up. And obviously her and my brothers was a, a, a help, you know what I'm saying? For me, you know, putting me on game and uh, just giving me the right knowledge that I need. And uh, those for you that's coming home too, bro, make sure y'all slow down. Mm -hmm. Because I think that I think that was one of my things too. Yeah. I try to rush everything yeah, when I came when home. Out, right. Like, and I had to sit my ass down. I'm like, hold on, I just came home. Just chill. Find a way to blend in. You feel me? Like not do too much or not, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of a lot of people come home thinking that the world is how it was when they left. When really it's not. Like it's a whole nother thing going on. It's a whole nother uh how I put it. It's just a whole, it's different motion going on right now in society, especially in this world that we live in right now. So, uh, yes, it was kind of hard, but obviously I'm doing good. It ain't even been a year since I've been out. And, uh, yeah, I just, I want to say I just been handling the business, but like I said, those first two months was kind of hard for Zilla. It was kind of, it wasn't, yeah. but it wasn't nothing like, oh, I'm going to go back to the streets. I'm going to go back to doing what I'm doing. Hell no, nah, because I'm going to tell y'all them six years wasn't worth it. You know what I'm saying? In six years, I actually sat my ass down and learned something and learned something from some real, you know what I'm saying? Some real OGs and up. But, uh, yo, man. Next, one. Next question. I can see y'all y'all really in tune with the wrestling thing. Uh, next question. Somebody asked me, who's your favorite cousin of the bloodline? I'm just, let me break that down for y'all. So, Roman, a.k.a. Joe on the Hawaii, that's a whole nother age bracket. He's damn near how old he is. Same as the twins. Same as, like a year older than my thing, right? No, we're the same year. And, you know, growing up in Pensacola, you know, they was doing a little high school thing. And I was still a baby. Me and Joseph, or as y'all know, uh, Solo Sakura. So I want to say, right now, I say Solo Sakura. Uh, he's my, you know, favorite cousin of the bloodline. Somebody said, what would winning an intercontinental title, the same title as your dad won, mean to you? So before I answer that, any title that I win, I'm going to be blessed. Any title that I win, I'm blessed. And that's how you got to be. To the question, it would mean a lot to me to win the same title as him. <laughs> what would your pops be doing if he was still here? I'll let you answer that first. You'd probably be eating right now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he would be very proud of you and all his kids and just still doing family stuff, you know, having his family members here or we go there, visit, just doing family gatherings. Um, what I feel like he would be doing, like I said, I feel like he'd probably be eating a big ass bowl of ramen noodle, noodle. with some eggs. Mm -hmm. Or something like that. Like, that's crazy, y'all. Like, this man really know how to eat. Y'all think I can eat? No. This man really know how to eat. Like, this ain't no game. I'm surprised he ain't even go to the eating competition where they be winning that shit. I know. He probably would've won that shit. Mm -hmm. Next question, though. Somebody said, when you finish training, where would you like to end up at? MLW with Jacob Fatu? AEW or WWE with the bloodline. So let me put it like this. Shout out to Jacob, man. Uh, WWE needs to sign that man this year. Sometime, or, or ASAP, matter of fact. But shout out to uh, mm -hmm. Jacob. But where I would like to end up is WWE. So, and I know that's what Jacob's trying to get to, too. What we all trying to get to. So I would say the WWE. With the bloodline, it don't matter. Or without him. I can go solo dolo. It don't matter. Uh, next question, how did your dad passing affect you? How did it affect you? 
Not us, just you. Oh, mentally? Um, that's a hard question. Like, how did it affect you? Like, oh, Obviously, it was a negative way, a bad way. Very bad way. I actually wanted to take myself, too, because he was my world. You gonna be all right? <laughs> she gonna be good. It's my fault. It affect me a lot. I ain't gonna lie. Cause I really, 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 it's really cliche to say, but I really feel like if he was here, I wouldn't have went to prison. Obviously it let, it, it, everything led up to me going to prison. Let's just put it like that. And obviously the answer to y'all question, it affected us in a way bad, negative way. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, we finna shake back from this shit. Like we really finna turn up. We really finna live life. Cause we understand this shit is short as hell. Mm -hmm. And we finna just motivate each other and motivate anybody that's trying to help us out and just do us and have fun with this shit. So that's what we on right now. And just live life, because life is precious. We can't, you know, we can't take life for granted. You know, ever since he passed away, that's why I, I, I really felt that, that same life is precious. I really felt that. Like, now I know Well, because you thought he was going to be here forever? Yeah. And when you lose somebody that close to you, now you know life is. Like, it's so, you can't take it for granted. You can't waste it away. And I think that's yeah. why my anger started. Like, I, after my dad died, I want to say, I, I, I was of, irritated about it. Of course. Yeah. About it. Even on the football field. Like, those of y'all know me, like, I used oh. to try getting fights. So good. Yeah. But you were so cocky, too, and oh. don't want to listen to nobody. Oh. And then, it's like, coaches would call me and teachers. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know what's going on with this kid. But when he would come home, I would, like, yell at him. And then that pushed him away even more. He didn't want to hear nothing because... He was his own boss and he just did a lot of stupid stuff. And then that got me worried, you know, cause he was the baby at the time. He was still a little bit. He was just got into a lot of trouble. And I got tired of oh, people calling me and I would tell him, you know, don't come home no more because I couldn't take it. My hair was falling off. I was losing weight. I couldn't even sleep. It's just a lot, it's just a lot of stuff. Then he was going in and out of juvenile. Oh, it's just, it's just, it was crazy. But it's all right, cause we gonna shake mad from it. Mm -hmm. Ain't that right? Ah, ah. We gonna shake back, we gonna head and wrap it up. We might do a part two, let me know, comment right now. Uh, let me know if y'all want the part two. If not, it's cool. But I'm so blessed that I did the, my very first Q&A video with mama. I don't think there's other uh, any other special person I would do my first Q&A video with. I can't even think of nobody right now, but I appreciate Mama LT for having you, Mama Zilla for having you. Uh, and yeah, man, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe right now. Go ahead and like, comment, do all that good stuff. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up, man. Make sure y'all stay up, stay blessed, and let's get it.